Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for being a part of Bethany Online. We're so glad that you decided to tune in this morning. And we'd love to connect with you in the comments. So during the entire service, our staff is going to be with you, answering questions, helping you to stay connected and stay engaged during the service. So I encourage you to reach out in the comments. In fact, right now, wherever you're watching from, count up all the people in the room that are watching with you and just put that number in the comments and just let us know how many people are watching. You can do it right now in the comments or the chat section. We're so glad that you are here. And whether it's your first time experiencing Bethany or maybe you've been experiencing Bethany all your life, we want to say welcome. We're glad you're here. Now, we realize that today is a little bit weird for uh, some of us, even maybe most of us. This is the first time ever in the history of our church and the history of thousands and hundreds of thousands of churches across the world where we're only having worship online. And so I want to let you know that we have been praying for you. We have been praying that even though it's a, a little bit unique experience, that the Lord would use this service to encourage your heart and to remind you of the hope that we have in Jesus. There's a couple of ways you can stay connected. As I said, be sure to stay engaged in the comments. We also would love for you to connect with us uh, on our Facebook group. If you're not a part of our Facebook group, you can follow the link in the comments there to be a part of that. And we wanna ask you to also to check in. Check in and let us know that you are watching today. And you can do that by just following the link in the comments. And it has a couple of questions just because we want to know your experience. What's your experience like? How's the stream for you? We want to hear your feedback because we're new to this and we want to make sure that uh, we can uh, help you and make it the best experience possible. So be sure to check in sometime today. You can do it right now if you like to check in and uh, that'll help us a lot. And then when Pastor Randy comes in just a little while to preach the word, you can follow along with the sermon in uh, the YouVersion Bible app, and you can, you'll, we'll give you the link to those uh, notes as well, where you can take notes on the sermon and follow right along. Thanks so much for being a part of our service. We're going to open the service in prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together in our homes all across Tulsa and Broken Arrow. Lord, thank you for the technology that you give us to be able to meet together in this way. And I pray that you would use this service for your kingdom, for your glory. Lord, encourage our hearts during this difficult time and help us to trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's worship together, okay? My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I encourage you guys to sing out. It might be a little weird to sing in your home, but sing out. Let's worship the Lord together. Sorrow comes to steal 
today we stand on the rock of Jesus. I invite you to sing that with me. Come on, sing. I'm standing on the rock. I am standing on the rock. I am standing in your love. I am standing on the rock. My firm foundation. My firm foundation. 
reminded of what the psalmist said. Your loving kindness, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches the clouds. I know it's a difficult time for all of us, but I want to remind you, we want to remind you that the Lord is faithful. The Lord is good. He's gracious and compassionate, and he's here for you today. In all of your worry, in all of your anxiety, you can be reminded that the Lord is faithful and he'll be with you. Will you sing with us? Great is thy faithfulness, O God.
Everybody, thanks for worshiping with us uh, today on the, at Bethany Church uh, online. And even though we're not physically present here in this building, that we are meeting together as the church. And I just want to invite you to go ahead and check in if you haven't already done that. You know, a normal part of our worship, and we really want to try to keep so much normal that we can in our lives when everything seems to be just going crazy. But normally we'd be receiving our offering right now. And worship always involves giving, no matter where we are. And so most Sundays we say we have three ways to give. But I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, today we have two ways that we can give. We can give online, or you can text your gift to 84321. And um, we've seen a real increase in uh, this past year in people taking advantage of giving online, but we know for most of you, this may be the very first time. So I want to tell you and assure you that it's uh, easy, it's safe, and all the links and information are there uh, to help you do that. And if you need help, just be sure to let us know and we'll uh, help you be able to do that. You know, this past Friday, we were here at church. Everything was closed down. It was just a uh, a few of us from staff and uh, getting ready to uh, have this worship service uh, this morning. And, um, and someone came to the door and um, it was Jim. Jim is one of our faithful members. He's almost 80. And so uh, Jim said he was so glad to catch uh, somebody here at the church. He came by for two reasons. One was he wanted to drop off his check and be sure that he gave. And then he asked, could someone help him learn how to give online. 
And so Joshua took a few minutes uh, with him and uh, helped Jim uh, set it, get it all set up. And now Jim's able to give online. I know Jim's watching this morning. So thanks, Jim, for your faithfulness and your stewardship in doing that. And uh, Jim said, if he can do it, anybody can do it. So thank you for your giving. And I guess there is another way you can give. You could just drop it in the mail. Uh, if there's no other way of giving, but I just want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving and helping us uh, be strong here at Bethany Church during these times. I want to share a passage of scripture with, with you during this giving time. Maybe this is the Lord giving you something as you give to him. But it's these verses in Psalm 46 that I've read over and over this week. It says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with all their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail or fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Then listen to these words of John 14, verse 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, and my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Let's pray. Father, we're gathered as your church to worship together, even though we are in different places today, all over this city, maybe all over the nation, maybe even in some places of the world, but we're your church. And Father, this room may be empty today, but it's filled with your spirit. And I pray for all the people and all the families who usually are sitting in these seats on Sunday mornings. And Father, I pray for every need that they might have, every fear that they may be facing, every anxiety they may be dealing with. And thank you for their faithfulness to worship. We know worship, sins, worry, fleeing. And Father, we know that you are faithful to us. And then Father, I pray for them. Father, we give today for the people who need to be sitting in these seats and we don't know who might come to these seats when this crisis is over looking for you. And Father, we give so those people can come. We worship you today by giving and to reach those who are in great need. We pray for those within our church that need your help, that we can help them. For those in our community and those all around the world. And then, Father, we pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and forever. Amen. Well, several weeks ago, I started a series from the book of Hebrews called Jesus is Better. And that was to be the series that would take us right through this season of Lent, right up through the Resurrection Sunday, the celebration of our Lord's defeat of death on Easter. We called it Jesus is Better. And then, as you all know, we were interrupted and sort of sent in a different direction starting last week. And so as we were able to gather together last week, Last Sunday's message was entitled, Jesus is Better Than the Coronavirus. And we talked about eight different lessons we can learn during this pandemic or this crisis. And if you haven't heard it and you missed it, I'd encourage you to listen to it. And of course, as the week progressed, things changed every day. And we know that this Sunday and next Sunday for sure, that we'll be worshiping online and so I was thinking about it. We may not be in our normal, regular house of worship, but we are able to be in our houses to worship. And we're glad that we're able to do that. So the question that I asked last Sunday is the one I want to start by asking us again this Sunday. And that is, how are we as Christians 
to respond to the coronavirus or to any crisis that we have in life. And even though one response is that now we're not able to, to meet on campus, we are able to meet online. And it's hard for us as pastors uh, to ever discourage and not meet and call off a service. But, you know, I really feel like it's our, our civic, it is our patriotic duty not to meet these Sundays that our nation calls us not to meet. I also think of it as our Christian responsibility as good citizens, caring about the health and well-being of others, as well as our own church family and members, knowing that we are to be instruments of peace and health in the world. And one way we respond to that is responding in faith with hope. Faith with hope. We respond differently as the church, as believers, than the world responds to this pandemic, this crisis, or any crisis that befalls us in life. And so now I want to ask you to be thinking about as you respond to it. First of all, you ask is, uh, what does God want us to, to learn during this time? What is it that God is teaching us through this epidemic, this pandemic, this crisis? And the second question is, you know, how does God want to use you? How does he want to use us during this time? And so for the next couple of three Sundays at least, or maybe for the short term for unforeseeable future, we'll be in a new series called Finding Peace in the Pandemic, or really Experiencing Peace in this Pandemic. If we were still in our series through Hebrews, we'd be right in Hebrews chapter 6 and and we'd be looking at a verse that I think is a verse that really the Lord gave me. I think he gave us as a church during this time. It's Hebrews 6, 19. And I want to share it with you this morning. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And we have hope. And that hope is our anchor. And we all know that we need an anchor in the storms of life. So we won't be just washed out to sea or drift away that we can hold solid to only then rather than a ship dropping anchor in the sea we drop our anchor in the in the heaven and we hold tightly to the anchor and as I was looking a little forward into Hebrews in just the next couple of Sundays we would be in Hebrews chapter 10 and in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 it says let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And so even though we're not meeting here, we're not neglecting meeting together. We're still meeting together, but it's a little differently now. And it's even more important that we don't neglect the meeting together. We have to work at staying connected. We can stay connected online through social media, through text, through phone calls. It's important to stay connected and to meet together, even though it's a little different. It's unusual for us. And the reason we do that is that Hebrews 10.25 says that especially so we can encourage one another. And so these are times that we need to be encouraging one another. Well, there's one particular verse that just sort of, I think the Lord just put on my heart this week. And I think he gave me this verse to help us through this time. It's, a, it's in Proverbs. It's Proverbs 12, 25, where it says there, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. And, you know, I've noticed that uh, in everybody I've met, everybody I've talked to, everybody I've seen, you can just feel the heaviness of what we're going through. The anxiety is so heavy. Even though anxiety weighs a man's heart down, a good word makes him glad. See, so much anxiety, so much heaviness in people. And, you know, it really wasn't just now, because it, it, it's, but it's especially now. You know, we really are an anxious people. I was reading this week that every generation in this past century in the United States people have been three times more likely to struggle with anxiety and depression than the succeeding generation. That means that we have been tripling our struggles with anxiety and depression with every generation. In other words, we've been experiencing a pandemic 
of anxiety, of panic that's taking place. And so we already were anxious people. And then you give us this crisis and this worldwide global pandemic that takes place, and we are really weighed down with heaviness. You can just sense the heaviness. But a good word makes people glad. And so we really do need a good word. I was praying about the, the good words that we would need during this time. And, and I think and you're following along in your notes. There's really two good words that we need during this time. One of those is a word of comfort. You need a word of comfort. I need words of comfort. I find them in God's word. That's where we go to find hope. That's where we go to, to find peace. But not only do we need words of comfort during this time, but we also need words of, of courage, words that would challenge us not to cower away from the, the obstacles we face, to, to be the church, to have the courage to be the church, to be different, and not only to receive hope, but give hope to others. And so I'm thinking about that good word, and, and I realize, you know, you really don't need a good word from me, but what we really need is a good word from Jesus. And so what I want to give you today is a, some good words from Jesus that come straight from his mouth. And I want to read them over you. I just want to let them sort of just let them fill your mind and your heart this morning. And I want us to look at, at God's word, Jesus' sermon in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 25. If you've got your Bibles, I encourage you to, to follow along and, and on your Bible app. For Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you eat or what you drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable to him than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like any of those. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now you might have noticed three times Jesus says, do not be anxious. Verse 25, verse 20, 31, verse 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious. Again, therefore, do not be anxious. Again, therefore, do not be anxious. As if he's telling us and trying to get our attention, do not be anxious. Jesus desires us to be totally free from anxiety and worry in this world. You know, we've uh, acquired a new vocabulary just in the matter of the past few days and words like self-quarantine or social distancing. But we really need to understand what Jesus is talking about here and define anxiety and worry as he's talking about it in the Bible. You know, if you were to look up anxiety in the, in the dictionary, you'd find something like this. It's a feeling of worry and, and nervousness or unease, typically about an imminent event or an uncertain outcome. The American Psychological Association, it defines and describes anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, physical changes like increased blood pressure. Sometimes it can lead to, to real anxiety disorders, and these are recurring and intrusive thoughts and, and, and concerns. And it can lead to physical symptoms such as excessive sweating, trembling, 
dizziness, rapid heartbeat, irritability, anger, compulsive behavior, exhaustion, fatigue, nervous twitching, memory loss, lack of concentration, shortness of breath, nausea, muscle tension, insomnia, and more. And so anxiety really does have an effect on us emotionally, psychologically, and physically. But we don't want to be sure that we don't read our understanding, our definition of anxiety and what the, the Bible is talking about when it talks about anxiety. And Jesus tells us not to be anxious. And, and sometimes it can lead to a real physical and even emotional and medical condition. And he's not saying there that it's a sin to have a, a medical condition. And you always need to be sure to make that, have that checked out. But, but sometimes anxiety, for example, in the Bible is a good thing where Paul talks about his, his anxiousness for the churches in Philippi and Corinth. And it's used to about a legitimate concern. And so I was thinking about the biblical definition of anxiety and worry. And those two words are often interchangeable and mean the same thing. And, and it, the, literally the word that's used in the Bible means to be drawn into different directions. It, it means to, to be torn apart. It literally means just to come apart, to come apart, and that's what anxiety does, and that's what Jesus is talking about, that kind of anxiety. So here is what I think, the, as I heard, the best definition I could hear of what anxiety or worry is in the Bible. It's carrying concerns in this world in such a way that we lose perspective on life and lack of trust in God. It's carrying these concerns in an illegitimate way, even though they're legitimate concerns, but carrying these concerns in a way that we lose perspective in life and even lack trust in God. And so it's right to be concerned, but we want to be sure that we carry those concerns in the right way and not in the wrong way, not in a way that would cause us to lose perspective on life and to lack trust in God. And so Jesus gives us here this freedom that we can have and we can have freedom from this kind of anxiety the kind of anxiety that most of us are dealing with now and so what's the good word that Jesus tells us well I'm going to give you five of these and go through them rather quickly but here's the first one your life is about so much more than anything that this world offers you your life is so much more than what this life, this world has to offer you. Jesus said in verse 25, Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor about your body or what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Now you look at that, and what does Jesus say? He, he talks about these three things that he mentions. He talks about food, talks about water, he talks about clothes or maybe shelter. You know, I think these are the pretty basic necessities of life. And if you're ever going to worry about anything, it would be these things that would be at the top of the list. These aren't frivolous things that he's telling us not to be anxious and not to worry about. And we, why should we not worry about those things? Why shouldn't we worry about them? Because Jesus says, your life is so much more. You know, the truth is, you can put anything in that sentence. Anything that is tempting you to worry, you can place it right in that sentence. What do you worry about and anxious about your job, about money, about your retirement accounts, about your health, even about your life. Why are you worried about those things? Your life is so much more than money, so much more than health, so much more than a job. Which leads us to the, ask the question, then, well, what is my life about? And so here's the second thing he tells us. Number two, it says, your life is about trusting the God who values you. That's what our life is about. It's trusting the God who loves you and values you. So look at verse 26. 
Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value of value than they? In other words, you are of much more eternal value to God than them. It's just, Jesus is sort of telling us that during this period of, of extreme anxiety and worry, what we need to do is go outside and do a little bird watching and just look at the birds. And you find a little peace in the, in the midst of this pandemic. They're not worried. They're not anxious about anything. You will find a worried bird, an anxious bird anywhere. Why? Well, because they just sort of instinctively know that God is providing for them. And then God says, you really are more valuable than they are. You really should even be more intelligent than they are and realize that God loves you and values you. And, and I just want you to remember or, or maybe to remind you or maybe for some of you who've never received his forgiveness that this is the time to do this. This is the time to give your life to Jesus or trust the fact that you've received the forgiveness in life. Jesus gives another illustration in verse 30. He said, If God so clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? He says, Look at the flowers. They're beautifully adorned, but they last just a little while and then they're gone. But yet we live forever. So why do we worry? Because we lose perspective or we don't trust. And that takes us to the third word, and that is that anxiety is not only unhelpful, it is extremely harmful. It doesn't help a thing, and it sure hurts everything. And so Jesus says in verse 27, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And what Jesus is saying is, it's just pointless. And it just makes matters worse to be gripped by anxiety. It makes the pandemic even more painful as we're gripped by anxiety. Well, there's the fourth thing that Jesus tells us. And that anxiety is a sign of unbelief in God. It's a sign of unbelief. In verse 31 and 32, Jesus says, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, well, What shall I eat? Or what shall I drink? Or what shall I wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Worry is what the world does. It's not what God's people do do. Anxiety, in other words, is exclusively for unbelievers. It's not for us as the church. It's not for us believers. The world doesn't know that God is in control. The world doesn't know that God loves them and values them. We need to be reminded of that. And we have lots of reasons to be anxious. But if you don't know God as your father and that he's in control and that he loves and values you, well, you have really no other option but to, to, to worry. But if you know those things, you don't need to be worried. You don't need to be anxious. If you know those things, there really is nothing to be anxious about. And then there's a fifth word that, God, that Jesus says to us. And that is that God knows and will supply all you need. That he knows and will give you everything you need. And so in verse 32, Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, all these things you're worried about, wondering where they're going to come from, all these things, well, they'll be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious enough for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And so what Jesus tells us is that God knows what we need. He knows what you need. He knows what you need better than you even know what you need. God's not in heaven wondering, well, I wonder what Randy needs. I wonder what you need. 
He knows exactly what we need. And because he knows those things, he says in verse 33, so seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll give you everything that you need. That's a promise for a pandemic. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he'll give you everything you need. A few days ago, I think all of us would have thought that Amazon or Walmart and Target, Sam's, Costco, they had everything that we would need. And now you walk through those stores and, and you just comment and, and talk about, look at all these empty shelves. The, there's no bread. There's no meat. Of course, there's no toilet paper. These are things that we think we need, but all these empty shelves, these, these unfulfilled orders are, are a reality of the fact that what we've learned is these supply lines are broken now all around the world. They're, they're broken and empty. And everybody's talking, well, how about these supply lines and how can we get these things? And, and these verses remind us that God never runs low he never runs out, and his supply line is never broken. He'll give you strength when you're weak. He'll give you courage when you're afraid. He'll give you hope when you're helpless and hurting. He will give you ultimately life when you're dying. He will supply every need you have. And then he says, therefore, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I don't think I've ever lived in my lifetime during a period of time which each day changed from the day before. And each day brought more worry, anxiety, more doubt, more questions, uncertainty about what's going to be happening. And this is God's great guarantee to us. His guarantee to us is that, that you'll have enough mercy for today. And don't worry about tomorrow. Because the trouble you have today, he's guaranteed you mercy for today. And when tomorrow comes, he'll give you new mercies for that day, for those troubles. In these past couple of weeks, every day just seems to be a little more trouble-filled than the day before. And so we don't know what even the next day is going to bring, much less the next week. And this causes anxiety and worry. And it causes us to lose some perspective on life. If we're not careful, it will cause us to lack trust in God. And we begin thinking that things, you know, things just are getting worse and worse and and you listen to what's taking place in the world, and you think that it's, it's, it's just getting worse every day, and I can't take it anymore, and I don't know what I'll do if it gets any worse. But today's mercy is for, for today's trouble. And if you need more mercy tomorrow, he'll give you more mercy for tomorrow. Troubles for today are taken care of. Troubles for tomorrow are promised to have enough mercy. God will give you what you need today, and for tomorrow. There's more mercy coming for tomorrow. So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about an uncertain future. We never knew what the future was going to bring anyway. And so don't worry about it. This frees us from anxiety. And you know, I have a good word for you. This is what the good word for us is. Jesus will free you from your anxiety. All you have to do is to trust him. Give your life to him. Receive the mercy he wants to give you for today. He guarantees you mercy for tomorrow. He invites us to cast all of our cares on him. You know, remember what Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 7. He says, cast or throw or drop all your anxiety on Jesus. Why? Well, because he cares for you. He's able to take care of you. He's able to take care of all those things. But the reason we do that is because he loves us. He'll free you from the weight of worry. He'll free you from the fear of the future. And that's why we can have peace during this pandemic. Not that, not that he gives you peace, but, but in other words, he, let him be your peace. You trust in him and he becomes your peace. You know, life wasn't easy, if you think about it, two or three 
weeks ago. And now life has become extremely more difficult. It's full of trouble and uncertainty. There's these fears of this global pandemic. And so how can I have this peace during this time? Well, you, you give him your life. You give him your life, and he says, I'll carry you. I'll take care of you. Trust me. Do you know the Jesus of peace? Do you know Jesus as your peace? Trust him, and he'll supply all of your needs. Let's pray together. Father, we know that these are certainly some of the most uncertain days that any of us have ever lived in. Father, we know that there's trouble tomorrow that may be even greater than the trouble today. And by the end of the week, we can't even imagine how much trouble there might be coming as we listen to the news. That yet, we have a good word from you that can lift the heaviness and this weight of anxiety from us. And that is that you love us, you value us, you want to be our peace. And I pray even in this moment, every one of us now will just begin to drop all of these anxieties. We're carrying around this heavy burden on you in this moment. And Father, I pray that we'll be your people. We'll be your church. Face this pandemic with the peace of Jesus Christ that's in us that passes all understanding. It's in Jesus.
Hey, thanks so much for joining us online today. We hope you enjoyed the service. And I want to tell you a couple of ways that you can stay connected with us this week. You might be wondering, what do you have for my kids? Your kids matter to God and to us, and we're going to prove it to you even online. So Pastor Natalie is going to have kids worship every Saturday evening at 630 on uh, the kids' Facebook group. So you can follow the link in the comments to connect with uh, the kids on Facebook and invite your kids or encourage your kids to participate in kids' worship on Saturdays at 630. And then our students also have Bible study and small groups on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock with Pastor Quinn, our student pastor. So you can, uh, that's on YouTube Live, and you can connect with them on Facebook as well. So I hope you'll make plans to, uh, for your students to be a part and engage with us online. And then we're going to have weekly Zoom prayer times. That's a, a Zoom is an online video conferencing where you can see each other and talk to each other. We're going to pray together and share, bear one another's burdens. So you can find out all those details on Facebook as well. And be sure to connect with our, our website for all the details and to keep uh, updated with all of our events and activities, Bethany.info, Bethany.info. Thanks again for joining us. I hope you'll join us again next Sunday right here on Facebook or on Church Online. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless you.